it looks like it is four o'clock on the dot. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, everybody, um, thank you all so much for joining my session, my first session of the last day of the summer conference, my third session overall. I did two presentations yesterday, but on a different topic kind of surrounding um, setting up your own time management. But today I have the privilege of talking about learning about summer melt. So um, quick show of hands, you can raise your hand in the comments or just say me or something, but how many of you have heard of summer melt before? If you haven't, that's totally fine. That's what we're here for, to learn all about it. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Sheila hasn't, Deborah hasn't. Okay, that's totally fine. I'm more than happy to tell y'all about what it is today and um, hopefully you learn something new today. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me introduce myself first. Oh my gosh. But Hello, everybody. My name is Adriana. I am Navajo from Gallup, New Mexico. I am the Many Goats clan, born for the uh, Towering House people. And I am a college success coach with the American Indian College Fund. So I um so I've been with the college fund for a little over a year and a half now. So I um, am really honored to talk about this. And I also help lead the first year experience program with the college fund as well. Um, I went into a little bit about it yesterday if you were at my presentation, but the first year program basically is uh, supplemental programming for any self-declared first year student in college. So that can be anybody who's coming straight from high school, the traditional not from high school to college or um, non-traditional if they you know, graduated college, um, you know, had a job or, you know, took care of their family, maybe went to college, didn't work out for them. So they left. Now they're going back into it again. Really, any, it's just a program for anybody who needs refresher or um, an extra, extra help or resources to get through um, the beginning parts of college and everything. So uh, how this all is relevant to the summer melt, um, this is definitely something that is growing as of recently. Um, with a lot of the incoming first year students into college. So we'll get more into that as we get into the presentation. But I want to start off with a general, you know, icebreakers. So what are you looking forward to this summer? Um, anybody going on any cool travel? Is anybody working or doing a really cool internship or just looking forward to taking some time off of school if you're in school? Is there um, a project you're working on maybe? getting some creative flow going, sewing, beading. Caitlin, working as a medical assistant. Awesome. Are you just starting that or is that um, like your current job right now? And you can come off mic as well. You don't have to just be in the comments, but if you want to comment too, that's totally fine. Yes, just starting. Actually, I started last week, so. Woo, congratulations. Good, ex good experience. Yeah. Awesome. That, yeah, definitely is an experience, but I'm glad. I'm happy for you. That's That sounds really exciting. Starting something new is also, is always really exciting. It can be nerve wracking, but definitely exciting in the end. So I hope I'm wishing you well on that journey. Sheila, taking some time off of school until summer classes start. Awesome. Being productive, getting your summer classes started. Rachel taking my niece to her first canoe journey. Oh my God, that's so awesome. I got to view one when I was in um, Seattle for one summer, and it was just so beautiful to see all the canoes out there on the water. Deborah, eight credits in school, hoping to finish, to fish, oh, fish a bit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I just went fishing this past weekend, and it was definitely, yeah, I love just being outdoors and everything. Christina, not taking time off, but we'll have a camping trip in July with my kids and taking credits. Awesome. Hey, that's something too, um, being productive while you're still doing school and everything. And then also taking time to hang out with your family and be outdoors during the summer, right? So yay, definitely looking forward to hearing all of these and excited for all of you and your um, and what your plans are and everything. All right, so let's get into the can of worms of what summer melt is. So uh, summer melt is a phrase that a lot of educators are starting to utilize, and it is something that 
we're starting to see more prevalent with the incoming first year students as they're coming into college. And basically it's um, recent high school graduates who are not, who are enrolled, planning to go to college. You know, they might've gotten accepted. They went so far as into enrolling in classes, telling the dorms they're gonna be living in there, or, you know, just kind of getting their uh, things set to go. Um, but sometime during the summer, they do not attend, they do not follow through with that plan. So they end up, um, you know, being no shows, no contacts. And there's a variety of reasons for why this might help happen. And that's why it's termed as like the melt away because they seem like they're really go getters and they're really excited to go to college and everything. Well, that, that might be their intention and, you know, they're really excited. And then something happens over the summer or they just don't follow up with their plans or something. And then all of a sudden they just don't show up for college for that first day or first week or for orientation or for all the things that happened in the beginning. And what um, some researchers have seen is that the lower a student's income is, or the more likely that they come from low income communities, the more likely they are to experience summer melt because they lack that necessary resources and support. And that's just, you know, social capital that not a lot of students are exposed to, unfortunately, just because of, you know, certain things that are happening and for the systems and stuff, right? So this can be a variety of different reasons. We'll go over that. We'll kind of, you know, dig a little bit into this and kind of deconstruct a few things here. Um, but I've, you know, done a lot of research in this and this was my my first time hearing about the summer melt uh, phenomena was sometime last year at a conference that I was attending. And it was a really eye opener for me too, because, um, I, you know, have experiences of like some of my friends when I was in high school um, who were really excited to go to college, but then some barriers came up or something changed and they decided not to go or they'd never made it to that first day of classes, right? Um, I, I also see in some of the students that I work with as well, um, when I was, you know, working as an admissions representative, we had a lot of students who were excited to come. They had their admissions packets all ready to go. They were excited to, you know, go to orientation, move into the residential hall, start college and everything. And then we just never heard from them or they never showed up to some other, it showed up to orientation or anything. So um, this has been a concern, you know, because we want those students who are excited and they want to go to college to follow up with those plans and everything. And um, there's a lot of different barriers and a lot of um, challenges that do come up that can lead to the summer melt. So we're going to go over that. So some students might have changed their plans, but the summer melt effect is is the effect of numerous barriers, barriers and challenges a student may face and not having enough support or resources to overcome them. Again, uh, maybe they didn't have that support while they were in high school or, um, you know, we a lot of the time you get told, you know, college is, the, college is the answer. You need to go to college. You have to go to college if you want to get a good job and everything. You know, we hear a lot of this a lot of the time, um, but sometimes taking the steps that are going to, you know, that happen after you get accepted to college. There's a lot of different documents. There's a checklist and everything that you have to get done as well before you even start the first day of classes. So it's a month long process, honestly. And a lot of people will say that summer melt does start sometime in February, but sometimes it can even start way before that, even so far as like when the student starts um, applying for college and everything. So um, we'll get more into that again. I have um, some scenarios we can go over, just like some real life stuff and some case studies that we can look at. Um, but just a little bit of behavior health again, and just to look over um, what might be the reason, what might be the underlying reason basically of summer mal and why some students might um, have this affected with, or might, you know, um, experience this. So our intentions don't always translate into action. You know, we want to follow, we want to say that we're eating healthy, we want to say that we're getting a lot of exercise, we're making our steps every day, um, we're practicing our culture every day, being sacred and all that, right? But sometimes we're not always like that. We're people, we're human, you know, we make mistakes here and there. Um, so sometimes you have those intentions that you want to do something great for yourself, but not every single time you're going to follow up with that. And there was the underlying, you know, message of that where you say, you know, oh, you got to be disciplined or you got to, oh, you got to um, make those like steps and everything to get there, right? But um, sometimes that just doesn't happen and it does prevent us from following through with those intentions. And sometimes that can demotivate us as well. Um, then, you know, the more, the more inconsistent you are, that'll kind of be like, oh, okay, well, I can't, I, it makes it harder for you to kind of start over again or to kind of do something new again, right? 
And then context matters often far more than we think. We always like to say, and I especially always like to in my programming as well, never assume that everybody knows what I'm talking about. And that those little things really do matter because if you go so far as breaking down some terminology that you might be used to, you might be exposed to because you work with it every single day. So like in higher education, we're talking about FAFSA all the time. We're talking about credits, full-time status students, part-time status students and everything. Like, yes, we're going to know automatically what that means, right? But there's going to be some people out there who this might be their first time ever hearing of those words or those terminologies. So um, it's up to us, you know, to kind of break that down and never assume just that everybody knows that we're talking about. And it, it go, those little, those little, you know, actions go so far and they are, they go miles basically they go and um, a lot of students will appreciate that you do take the time to explain different things because there's a lot of complex terminology when it comes to being in higher education space right um there's still some things that I'm learning and understanding as well I mean um you know I don't work in financial aid specifically but we do work closely you know as being a scholar have, as having our scholarships um, you know, we work closely with our scholarships team and there's still some terminology that we're learning with them and everything. So um, it's always good to just, you know, give context and to get, definitely give explanation where it's needed um, just because there might be somebody in the crowd or multiple people, people in the crowd who might not really understand where you're coming from. And then that um, kind of ding something in their mind where they're like, oh, I don't understand this. And then the intimidation comes of that too, where it's like, I can't even understand this or I can't even read this, know what they're trying to say here. So how the heck am I going to continue in college and stuff? So there's some, you know, underlying behavior, behavior health that happens around here as well. So um, just to kind of get a baseline level of what of what that is as we get in more into this presentation. So um, there's a lot of different causes and every single student is different in, you know, the different challenges and difficulties that they might be going through. But um, here's some of the common themes that we see with those different summer melt uh, scenarios and stuff. The biggest one being financial aid and other forms that a student might have to complete before, you know, the matriculation, um, the all the steps before they go and make it to that first day of classes and start college, basically. Um, and we know financial aid is a whole monster in itself. <laughs> um, some there's it takes literally, I feel like years and multiple you know, trial and error periods and everything to really understand, especially like if you're filling out the FAFSA form or other financial aid documents. And FAFSA itself, you know, it's going through some changes. It's um, being improved. It's being, um, what is it called? Edited and everything. And the beginning part of the FAFSA this past year was a complete mess. And it was really important for us and like other educators and uh, people in higher education spaces is to assure the students that it is not their fault if they're not hearing anything from, you know, the government or anything regarding or updates on their FAFSA forms, just because it was a big mess in the beginning. Right now, it's definitely a lot better and students are starting to hear more um, updates and more things, you know, from their FAFSA and stuff. But um, it's all really confusing, especially if you're doing it by yourself, you know, um, like I said, summer melt does happen with students who are coming from low income, single income families and um, minor, minority communities as well. So sometimes they might be coming in as first generation students, being the first person in their family to go to college or even to understand all of this um, compared to somebody who has an older sibling or their parents or somebody, you know, that they're close to has gone to college and is able to help them with that and everything. And then there comes school staff as well that comes in that can help, but not every single school has the capacity um, or like the manpower really to, you know, deal with their student or to work with their students um, as far as getting their financial aid documents together. But, um, you know, even when you accept your, you get accepted into a college and the financial aid office will send you a letter or an email um, of your financial aid package. So after you do the FAFSA, then it gets sent to the school and then they get together your financial aid packages and sometimes give you additional scholarships with the school. And looking at all those numbers can be really intimidating. I can remember back when I was, you know, first getting into college, um, I got sent like a 10 page letter, uh, like a packet of all my financial aid information and all the things and awards and numbers and stuff. And it was really hard to really comprehend that on top of trying to finish out high school, trying to, you know, finish out your um, final exams and everything and focus on all of that. 
So it can be difficult and confusing for a lot of students. Um, seeing, you know, the big sticker price of college, the cost of attendance, like the tuition, um, residential fees, all the other fees that come after, you know, student, what are they called, student activities or books and all that different stuff, meals, whatever, you know, it's, the, all those numbers can be really intimidating when you see the big sticker price and that, excuse me, then you see the financial aid you know, package or number that you're qualified for. And sometimes there's a gap between there, you know, you and then coming in as a first time student, looking at all this stuff for the first time, you can be like, wow, how is, how am I going to, you know, close that gap between these two different things? How am I going to find more financial aid? How am I going to find more funding to, you know, pay off whatever this big cost of attendance bill is and everything, right? So, um, you know, it's hard for them to visualize that. And sometimes if you don't have that help there, it can be definitely intimidating. So then that can kind of help you, fizzle. that will affect the student to fizzle out and then possibly not follow up and continue on with the college that they wanted to go to in the fall. Other logistical challenges too, um, anything that's happening in their personal life, you know, sometimes a student will be one of, will somehow become like the head of the house or they'll have to be the main income income source. So they don't maybe have time to go to school because they have to go to work. Um, maybe they have to be a caretaker. Um, maybe their plans change or something. Um, and it just, you know, anything that happens in their personal life may arise over the summer and lead the story, lead the student to worry about their ability to succeed while in college, just thinking about time and stuff, you know, we can talk so much about time management and how to set your schedule to make sure you're getting all your things done, make sure you have time to go to class, do homework, go to work, you know, take care of your kids or whatever your case may be, but we always talk about, you know, there's not enough time in the day and that's definitely not your fault because there's also this other term that comes up, which is called time poverty. And that's a whole other thing that we can get into later as well. But um, it's, you know, it's because of these systems that are not necessarily set up for students like this to succeed. And we're trying to break those barriers down and to tell these students and assure them that you do deserve to be in these spaces. And it is not your fault that you can't find time in the day to one, you know, go to school, get your degree, work on your degree, but then also have time to get more funding so that you can possibly just make it through, you know, survive, to get food, to pay off your rent, to pay for school and everything. So there's a lot of, you know, logistical challenges that comes there. And this can really cloud up your um, student's mind and it can definitely uh, create that barrier and that worry and stress in them to think, can I even, you know, do I even have time to go to college really? Another really big thing too is missing emails. And, you know, emails, I know we get a lot of emails throughout the day. I know we send some emails, you know, to all of our scholarship recipients and stuff. And there's a fine line and um, boundaries as well that you have to navigate with that when you're reaching out to students and everything. But um, a lot of the time, very important information is in those emails. And as soon as you're accepted into a school, you get assigned your school email, right? Um, you're, you give like, you get like a letter or an email or something that says all of your login information for school email, for the student accounts, like to see like your tuition bill, to accept your financial aid packages and all that. And sometimes students will miss out on this because they don't check their emails. <laughs> um, and this is really important to in, encourage your student, to encourage the scholar to as soon as they get that email to log in right then and there, make sure that they're checking their email very consistently because that's going to be the biggest and primary way that schools are going to reach out to that student. And for any, you know, important announcements, just to contact them regarding, you know, important information, um, really anything. So definitely emails are one of the really big things that can also help or that can also lead the student to becoming overwhelmed, seeing all those different missed emails saying, you know, last, last reach out or last time, last attempt, or, you know, must be done, action required, you need to sign this, you need to call this, you need to accept this and all that. 
And seeing all those different items, again, can be intimidating to look at. And then you might say, oh my God, I'm already behind. So then that can be like, I'm not even going to look at that. And then the student might miss out on something and then eventually not go make it to that point to get to college. So it's definitely something that happens, you know, so definitely try to encourage and um, yourselves as well, like to really encourage students to look at their emails and make sure that they're making that uh, routine in, or making that a consistent thing in their routine. And then, uh, like we were mentioning too, lack of access lack of access to resources most again most of the summer melt cases are coming from students who are low income or first generation students that um, have challenges navigating the whole college preparation process and again there's a lot of different things there's a whole checklist of things that you have to do when you're getting ready to go to college residential hall financial aid package um, finding more funding, finding more scholarships, like, like a bunch of different things, right? So it's um, it's really important to for the students to find that support from somebody in their school, somebody from their family, and, or somebody even from the college that they're, they're wanting to go to to help them navigate all of that because we don't want to see them continue to fizzle out before they even get to college, basically, because it's a month long process and I'm going to keep saying that it's really a month long process to just even get started to go to college. It doesn't, it doesn't just start, there's not like a button that just says, you know, start first day of college. There's multiple steps that you have to take when you're going to college. So let's take a little break and let's do some reflection as well. So learning a little bit more about summer melt. Uh, think about your own journey. What were, what are or were some hesitations you have or had through the college preparation process that very beginning when you were when you applied and you started getting communications about um, all the different things you know the different checklist items that you needed to do um, were there any hesitations you had were there any you know like oh I don't know like can I am I really able to do this or maybe some of you were affected by summer mel if you're comfortable to change or to um, talk about that, that'd be awesome. But yeah, type your answers in the comments or anybody feel free to come off mic if you'd like to. Managing the communications from my school was a bit overwhelming at first. Definitely, yeah, especially in those beginning stages, it feels like you're getting an email almost every single day, shoot like multiple times per day, right? And sometimes um, you're like, oh, this could have been all in one email, right? But somebody's sending it like at a different email every single time, right? So <laughs> um, that's also important for us on the side too, like the educators, administrators and staff, school staff and everything to cater to the students and make sure that you're not repeating things and you're condensing everything into one file, but also making it readable and understandable to the student when they're doing that matriculation process of making it to the first couple days of, or making it to the first days of class. Anybody else want to share? All right, no problem. It was a nice little break there, honestly. <laughs> so let's go ahead and keep going. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some scenarios. And um, this is just gonna be like um, like example case studies, I guess, where you're gonna see some cases that's gonna define or de describe a student that we're looking at. And uh, so we're gonna go over like solutions on how to help this student, what could have been done. And then we can also take some suggestions from you as well, if you have something in mind that would work or would help the student um, better. So we have three examples, I believe. So, oops, excuse me. Uh, student A is on their way to graduate high school and is planning to 
attend University of Oklahoma in the fall. So they were accepted already and they're just, you know, waiting it out to graduate high school. Student A will also be the first in their family to go to college. So that will make them a first generation student. And over the summer, they, they do get their financial aid package letter and it's pretty lengthy and the terminology is hard to understand. So this leads the student to become stressed on their cost of attendance compared to how much financial aid they are receiving. And this leaves it up in the air to the student where they don't know, they don't have any support or resources or even the knowledge on what, on what they can do to lessen that cost or to even where to find the funding to pay off the college basically. So this, he becomes stressed. Um, so uh, they consider to apply for scholarships, you know, some that they might have heard word of mouth from their family or might have seen like on social media or seen like at a college fair or something. But when they're doing the research and stuff, they see that a lot of the scholarships have closed or they're due, their deadline is coming up really closely. And he does, he is able to apply for some of them, but doesn't get awarded any of them just because it was rushed and you know he wasn't able to answer the questions as well as they wanted to. So um, all these stressors and everything and everything that he was dealing with um, leads him to not attend in the fall, to not show up to orientation or to show up to first day of classes. So this is a very real life scenario. You know, this might this might sound familiar to some of you, maybe some of the students you work with or some of your friends, some of your family. I know. Um, this is definitely based off of a friend that I had and um, got his permission to share this, but <laughs> no, um, this is very real life. You know, you can find this with a lot of different students who are um, seniors right now and looking to get into that. And this is, you know, there's no fault here on anybody, right? Um, let's go ahead and get into the working solution. I call this a working solution just because it can continue to be work on. It that doesn't have to end just right here. There's multiple ways that we can go around this, but here's just like a working solution on some ideas on what could help the student. So again, identifying that he is a first generation student. So this can, you know, help you classify, not really classify, but just like help you um, make it set in your mind that he's probably going through all this for the first time. Um, his parents are trying to help, but might not have enough information to give him as far as, you know, filling out all the documents or whatever. And um, again, he didn't know that he needed to um, find different scholarships or what even, or, you know, what the difference is between the scholarship or a loan or something, right? So uh, he needs additional support and resources as somebody from his high school could have helped him as a uh, school counselor, or um, he definitely could have reached out to the college's financial aid staff. So um, there's also a part of taking um, initiative to reach out when you need help. And that's definitely one of the biggest things that can, biggest and underrated things that could definitely help a student in this scenario is just reaching out and saying when you need help, because more than likely there's going to be somebody that's going to want to help you. Never hurts to ask questions, never hurts to ask for help. Um, also, the school counselor or somebody like a mentor or a senior advisor or somebody can do a research of list of scholarships for the seniors to apply. So that way you're catering to all like the whole class and not just one individual person. And it can better help most of them and even do like a information session on the different financial aids that there are. So what the scholar, what is a scholarship? What is a grant? What is a loan? What is FAFSA even? You know, really breaking down all of that and explaining especially the importance of each of them scholarships and grants, you do not have to pay back. And then loans, definitely you do have to pay back with interest. So just breaking it down like that and showing the student that it is possible to get more funding than what your school is already offering you. And that it doesn't just stop there and that you can keep continuing to work at it. So those are just some ideas that could help definitely the student and what could have um, been done to help him kind of avoid uh, the summer melt. So student B, student B is also on their way to graduate high school and is planning to attend a community college, Mesa Community College in the fall. Um, the student comes from a low income family. And over the summer, they become the main supporter in their family 
and is needing to get a full-time job to help, you know, uh, lessen the family load and to help pay off bills and um, purchase groceries and all that. Um, so this leads a student to not think that they'll have time to be a full-time student on top of their busy work schedule already. Um, again, they're looking at their um, what they have to do for work and maybe their hours are kind of all over the place or something, or they have the you know eight to five job or something, then there's just not enough time and um, they're just not aware of like other options that might be out there. So um, on top of all the stressors and everything that's happening, they choose not to attend Mesa Community College in the fall. <clears throat> So some solutions that could have helped here, the working solution, um, they could have considered options. The school that he was attending, high school, high school that he was attending, um, maybe could have offered up different options, being a part-time student or seeing even if the college offers asynchronous classes or maybe even evening classes that he could attend doing the virtual um, work, the virtual, being a virtual student, taking, seeing if the classes are offered virtually that could work with his time and everything. Um, this also could have, again, this is another scenario where uh, he definitely could have reached out for help or explained his, um, his scenario with um, an advisor at the college or even somebody in admissions or anybody, you know, who works in the student services. And they could have also helped him know more about like the um, different options that were there. So again, being the part-time student, taking one or two classes rather than being the full-time student load because um, this was something that they were unaware of when they were going into college and thought they needed to be full-time student, but um, just giving him the options on what could have what could have also been done, being the part-time student, taking evening classes or seeing if there were any asynchronous classes where they where he could watch the video, the class lecture on video, and then do the assignments whenever he had time to and not meet at a specific time, basically. And most of the time, student services will have a plethora of resources and um, different contacts to look to if you're ever struggling financially or need some relief funding. I know that's definitely something that um, the student could have, you know, utilized, maybe the school could have reached out to them, sent out an email to all of their newly accepted students and said, you know, hey, if you need any extra help or assistance or worried about paying off your schools or whatever, here's some things that you could look at. Here's some grants, here's some relief fund that you could apply for just to kind of help support them while being a student as well. And then just, you know, seeking out other resources to help eliminate any other stressors that may arise while being a college student and the only income in their family. There's a lot of different things that they can utilize um, that are offered for students in this scenario. And um, again, just I guess the underlying message really is just being able to reach out for help um, because you know schools, they do reach out. They, they have a whole lot of students that they have to work with. So it definitely helps when you make the first initiative and you make the, you take the first step to reach out and say, hey, I need help. There's no, no Ill, Ill manner in that or anything, just saying, hey, I need help. I'm struggling a little bit financially, but I still wanna go to school. How, what are my options? What can, what can help me? And then they'll be more than willing to help you with that. All right, so last student. Student C is also on their, on their, they're also on their way to graduate from high school and they're planning to attend University of Southern California in the fall. So again, they're accepted. They got it, they're getting everything in the mail. They got their cool little freebie t-shirt and stuff. Um, but the student comes from a very remote community, maybe somewhere on like an, a reservation with very spotty internet connection. So I'm unaware of the communication that the school was trying to make with them. Uh, they don't log into their student email until two weeks before they're, they're planning to move to into their dorm. Um, so they log into their email, maybe they go to somewhere where they have better reception or um, something like that, and then they log into their student email and they see that they have a whole list of email communications that the school was trying to make with them regarding, you know, move-in date, orientation, accept your financial aid package, uh, send us your medical records, you know, most residential halls will ask for that. And they see that they haven't completed all of these things uh, to help them matriculate into the fall. 
And this becomes a big stressor for them because they feel like they're already behind and they're saying, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't even know about all of this until I just checked my email. So now maybe they're calling up the school and um, most schools will be really helpful with you. And um, hopefully they give you a little bit of leniency, but that's not the case most of, or some of the time. Most sometimes they'll say, you know, I'm sorry, you needed to do this by this date. And, um, you know, it might be too late by that point. So it's really important to check your email. Again, I'm really going to stress that. Make it a, a habit in your routine to check your email. So new story orientation is also happening like in a few days very soon and they need to move in and the student isn't prepared to do so. They haven't packed. They haven't gotten their things ready. They don't, they um, don't have a ride quite yet scheduled or something, you know, so um, this is another stressor that they're there and uh, they have to be there for the new student orientation and the student doesn't know if they're going to be able to make it on top of all these other things that they didn't do um, during the matric matriculation period. So they just decide not to attend in the fall and um, there are no show at the new student orientation. So, you know, this is, and again, all of this is really real life scenarios and it's definitely something that we'll see with different students and some will have um, different cases, similar cases coming from different backgrounds, different places. So with this student, the working solution could be high school exit surveys. This is something that I haven't brought up yet, but it's becoming more utilized with high school senior advisors or school counselors to do a high school exit survey. And this is just to ask questions, really important questions, and also give reminders to those graduating seniors who are planning to go to college in the fall and making sure that, you know, they're kind of getting through those checklist items. Have you logged into your student email? Have you received any communication for that matriculation process, getting ready to go to college, like new student orientation, all the documents you're going to send for residential halls and stuff. They can also ask, you know, have you set a time, have you... Um, I'm losing my train of thought. Oh my gosh. Have you uh, made an appointment with your academic advisor? Have you visited campus yet? When is your move in date? Are you planning to live in the residential dorms? You know, so even though they're completing high school, though that does that, you know, the relationship doesn't just end there to help combat the summer melt, the student, the um, high school, you know, seniors, the senior advisors, school counselors, or whoever's, you know, working with those loads of students can definitely continue that support and that mentorship as they're going out um, and utilizing that exit survey data to see what they can address with the students and maybe even hold a session where they can help the students find their login information to look at the emails and explain the different things that are there and why they're important and why they need to be completed. And um, this might not be uh, possible for a lot of different high schools or schools, but definitely it's um, it'd be cool to consider some type of summer mentoring so the students can still use them as a resource and that knowledgeable person to help them get ready and prepare for that college matriculation process. Again, getting ready to go into that college for the first time. And um, also communicate to the, to the students the importance of locating big dates and to look out for. So again, when the new student orientation is, when do I need to be there on campus? Uh, when do I need to move in? When do, when do classes start? When do I need to sign off on my, or when do I need to accept my financial aid package? When do I need to submit my application for this um, scholarship? And, um, you know, because again, there's so many different things that are happening uh, on top of trying to focus on graduating high school, um, working on all these documents as you're getting ready to go to college and stuff and then some other you know external things that may be happening so help your student out as much as you can help somebody out as much as you can to give them a little bit of mentorship and say hey I went through this before let me I can try to help you here and there and then kind of explain a few things here because any help I'm sure is definitely very appreciated by these students because it is a very long <laughs> and complicated process for some for most honestly it was hard for me so here's some other solutions we can consider that um, maybe have not been mentioned here. And again, if there's any that you also would have done as well, you can definitely put it into the comments. Um, but being an active, being active in your students' college preparation journey, this can be for parents, for 
older siblings, for uh, grandparents, other family members, staff, school staff, or somebody. Um, being active in the student's college preparation journey um, definitely will help. And um, it's, you know, even though they're going out into the world for the first time, they're going to be going into college, you know, learning how to become, how to grow up, how to become an adult and all that, work on all this and be independent and stuff and learn who they truly are, like, you know, grow into themselves, basically. They still need that mentorship and they still need that, that guidance from somebody who can be there to help them. And it doesn't have to be, you know, leading their hand or, um, you know, doing every single thing for them, but just showing that you do care enough to be a part of this journey and showing that you want to be there to support them, even though they're, you know, going off to college and going to be on their own and all that. Um, it's definitely very important to be that active person in the student's life and to help them when you can. And even it might be a learning process for you too. You might know something, you might know like, oh, I can help you with the financial aid part. I have those documents or, oh, um, this is what I would take when I move into the dorms. This is really, you need flip-flops, <laughs> you know, because if you're going to be like in communal showers, make sure you're taking flip-flops and all those different things, right? So I feel like any knowledge will really definitely help the student um, ease into their college preparation journey. And it's really much, it's really, really appreciated. Also find out the students are, you can also find out if students are going to the same college and help have them work together. Um, what did, what was Amanda talking about? Like that um, group accountability, keeping each other accountable, saying, you know, hey, just to let you know, this email came out about new student orientation. Did you res register? Did you see that we need to, you know, um, move in by this day or something? And then vice versa. Did you accept your financial aid package? What classes are you going to take and all that? You know, so, or who's your advisor? Um, definitely, definitely, if you can find people who are going to the same college, maybe it's the local community college or the state college, or maybe even have two who are heading out of state and you can kind of pair them together so that they know they have somebody to, who they know when they're going to college and stuff and to help going through all the matric matriculation process can definitely take a lot of stressor and a load off of this individual students. Um, so that's always something really cool to look out for. Um, reaching out to your students in creative ways. So texting campaigns, we're like, we're always on our phones, right? So um, just sending them general reminders saying, you know, make sure that you're doing this, make sure you're checking your emails and all that, right? Um, not sending them like every single day, but maybe just like every now and then just say, hey, make sure that you're doing this. Are you doing good? Do you have any questions or whatever? Uh, again, just showing that you're, you want to be active in that college preparation process. And then if any students are feeling, um, a little unsure or saying, oh, I don't know, maybe college isn't really my thing. You can always schedule a visit, a visit to the campus. They can do a tour. You can do a tour with them. You can take a group of students and do a tour or something, you know, if it's local or if you have the means to definitely take a trip all the way to where they're trying to go, if it's out of state or a little further um, or take, I know there's like virtual tours and everything. So that's also something you could look at as well so that they can just see themselves. They can virtually visualize themselves and see, you know, oh, here's a dining hall. Here's the residential halls. Here's, you know, the engineering classrooms that I'm possibly going to be in and stuff. Uh, just to kind of help visualize them and get them excited and say, you can be here. You just, you just have to fill out these couple documents. You have to do all this. You're already accepted here. Just you need to do all these different things there. Then, then you can start your school. So mostly that's like the biggest load. And then you get to go into school. And then like you half of the time don't have to do all those documents again, unless it's like financial aid stuff, right? And then again, just acknowledge and recognize that the college preparation process can be difficult and very time consuming. Just honoring that, recognizing and uh, validating their feelings of stress or of any confusion, anxiety, and say, you know, this is normal. This is definitely something that I dealt with as well. If you went through the same process or, <clears throat> you know, just really kind of finding yourself with them and say, you're going to get through this. I'm going to be here to help you as much as I can if you need my help or if you want my help. <laughs> no, but like just again, showing that you do care and just acknowledging that it can be a process will definitely just take like so much off of them because um, a lot of students will feel like they have, you know, something to hold up. They have, they have like their families that they got to hold up. They have like all these different things that they feel like they have to uphold and stuff. Um, but if there's somebody there, if there's just that one person that says, hey, you're human, if you're feeling nervous, if you're feeling uncertain, don't worry, this is normal, I got you, that'll make such a life change, I swear. 
So um, here's just a little timeline that I like to look at. Um, it's always important to start early. Um, usually a lot of the college preparation stuff or thinking about what you're gonna do post-secondary, so post high school when you graduate um, happens in junior year, like around spring, that's when all like the college entrance exams come in, like the ACTs, the SATs. I know some colleges aren't doing that anymore, but um, if they do offer that, it's always good to do that just as a college preparation thing and to um, see realistically, like, you know, where you are on the benchmark and everything. Um, so while they're looking for colleges and looking at the application processes, uh, you can help them look through the terminology and make sure that, you know, that they understand some things here and there, if they have any questions, that's um, things that need to be broken down. And then also it's really crucial to have the realistic conversations about college here. So starting as early as here, you know, talking about the cost, not being intimidated by the cost of attendance, the importance of different financial aid opportunities, the scholarships, the grants, loans, if you wanted to go that route, you know, um, what do you, what do you want to do? What kind of degree do you want to seek? Where do you want to go to college? Are you, are you ready if you want to go out of state? Do you know what, you know, how you're going to get there? Do you, all these different things, you know, have those realistic conversations with them so that it can be implemented and that, that seed can be implemented and then they can think about that as they're um, continuing to search for the colleges. <clears throat> Senior year. So this happens in the fall and this is when the college application season is happening. Um, when you actually go into the, uh, um, filling out the application, submitting them. And it's always cool to be open to having one-on-one -on -one appointments with your students. So if they have certain questions about um, some of the application processes, maybe they'll ask you if you can read over their personal statements or their essays. And, you know, if you want to, if you're comfortable with that, they definitely go forward with it because that'll help them a lot. And then definitely encourage them to apply for the FAFSA and really enforcing that it is a free application and that um, they do qualify, they can get qualified for the Pell Grant and then they can also qualify for work study as well. And then just breaking down all those different terminologies with them just so that they're more confident as they go into this process. So then we get into spring of senior year and this is where everybody says summer melt starts in February. So that's where, you know, they're accepted and everything, but they're also kind of like, ooh. So there's a lot of things that are going into this process. Am I gonna make it through the summer or am I gonna make it, am I really gonna make it to those first day classes and stuff? So be proactive here, start early, start seeking. If there's any uncertainty or any confusion, definitely uh, take it on head on and um, talk with them, seek, seek help with the school counselors, go over it with the financial aid staff at the college. Again, if you have multiple students going to one college, bring the financial aid staff in and have them talk with students there. And then also researching and applying for scholarships. Again, this is usually when they'll open and I'm really stressing, again, the difference between the financial aid options and scholarships definitely are the way to go. So then it doesn't stop there after they graduate. Um, there's also the summer. So again, if you have the means to, if you're able to definitely offer that summer support, encourage the students to, check their emails again, I'm gonna keep saying it, to um, actively check into their accounts to make sure that they're getting all their documents done. And then incentives always help as well. Um, if you say, you know, oh, if you, um, if you, let's see, if you make an appointment with your academic advisor, we'll send you a $50 gift card or something like that, you know, just showing that you still have that ongoing support even after they graduate high school, just so that they're able to avoid that summer melt and to have that support to go into the matriculation and eventually get into the first day of college. Then you can leave them alone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that you learned something new and there's some things that you want to take away here. Um, but I'll leave this open right now. If anybody has any questions, comments, thoughts, anything that inspired you here, if you wanna share, um, is there another method that helped you or another student avoid the summer melt that you saw work <clears throat> or that you know thought was interesting? And if you experienced summer melt, how did you overcome it? How did, how did you navigate it? Or what are, where did it start basically? But yeah, if this, you don't have to answer them, you can just, um, I'll leave it up to you if anybody wants to come off mic or if you want to type it into the comments. Um, but yeah, I that's pretty much it. I do have my 
contact information here. Thank you all so much. Um, if you want a copy of the presentation, I'm more than happy to send it to you. If you have any questions or anything, uh, definitely reach out to me. I'm more than willing to help you. But yeah, I'll leave these up here. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you again. Yes, thank you, Sheila. Thank you for attending. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Sunicia. I hope I'm saying that right. Miigwech. Miigwech, Deborah. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're at time too. So if you want to go ahead and take your break until and get ready for the next session, you're more than um, free to log off, go stretch, go get some water or something. But yeah, thank y'all so much for attending. And I hope you all have a great second session. And thank you so much for um, choosing to come to this one first. So thank you. Have a great day.